Now, when you go through here and you double click on these, you're going to see we have the environment over here is going to update. And basically all these are, these are editable studio environments. Now, the interior and exterior are not so much. Uh, however, you can modify these as you want. But first, let's stick with the, we'll go to our studio lighting here. And we'll choose that three panel straight. So we'll talk about this a little bit. Um, if you want to edit some of these, what you can do is you can click in here and you can select these things here and what we have is background panels, round pins, and rectangular pins. Rectangular pins is locked. If you unlock those you're going to see you can have access to those and you can turn those off. So we have rectangular pins, round pins, and then background panels here. Now if you click on one of these pins and drag it around you're going to see if I drag toward the bottom it's going to kind of go out to a kind of a rounded top shape. So this one's going to light from the top, this one's going to light from the bottom. Now with this selected, you're also going to see rectangular, circle, and half. So if you change it from rectangular to circle, now it's just going to be a circle of light here. And if you go to half, it's going to just do a half circle, or if you choose rectangular, a half rectangle. With this one selected, you can also go through here and hit this little trash can. That'll go ahead and delete that. Or while you're in here, you can go at all the rectangular pins, right click, and then just hit delete. So to simplify this, I'm going to take these background panels here and we're going to delete those two. And now we're just select, set with these round pins which right, right now is basically this floor here. If you get rid of this one, now we're just basically left with the background. In fact, you can go here to this all black, double click that one, and now we have an all black environment. So let's set up a lighting environment that's custom. So what we can do is we can go here to this little plus sign here, and we can go add pin, and now we've added a pin to our environment here, and it's already updating in our scene here. So if I move this pin around, it's going to light our object. If you want to see your lighting environment update, go back here to the environment, go back to settings and choose the lighting environment. And now as we move this around and then we rotate around our object. Oh, sorry. It's telling me, so at, when I add a pin, it's telling me control left mouse button that control left mouse button to add a highlight, left mouse button to drag in position. So it might be even better. Let's go ahead and hit done. I'm going to take this one here. Let's go to the HDR editor. So with this one selected, we're going to go ahead and hit delete. Now when I go to add a pin here, Instead of just letting it sit there, what I'm going to do is control left mouse button and click on my object. So let's say I want to highlight right here on the corner of the R. So I'm going to control left mouse click and right on the corner of my R is where it's going to put that highlight. I can continue to do that. I can control click this up here. It's going to add another pin. I control click this one down here. It's going to add another pin. And you see as I do that, it's adding more and more pins through here that I can choose and then move around. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those last couple that I made here. So. We have the R highlight one that we added. Now with this pin selected, I can move it around. I can go here and make it rectangular instead of circle. I can make it half instead of full. I can move it up. I can move it down. And when I'm done, I can go ahead and hit the done key. And now when I rotate around, you're going to see this is the lighting environment that I'm creating because I no longer have the color under the settings here. I have the lighting environment chosen. So as I add new lights, it's going to create more environment and that environment is going to light my object here. So instead of clicking on my object, I'm going to right click in here and hit duplicate and then just move this over. And now I've got a light right behind my object. Let's go here to the upper left here. and Let's change the color of that. So if I go down here to my HDRI editor and we have this one selected, go ahead and choose color and we'll make this one slightly warmer. So we can warm this up and you can make it any crazy color that you want to. In fact, the light that's coming in from the front here, if we make this background one cool, and then select this one here, go to color, and make we'll make this one red. Or, well, you know what, let's make it red, let's just make it warmer. So now when you rotate around to the back, this side here is getting cool lighting, and then this side here is getting warm lighting from this light over here. You can also change the brightness of your selected light here, so we can go over here to one and just crank up that brightness just a bit. Go down here, there's uh, several adjustments, uh, the angle and the rounded corners. You can modify the fall off, make it a little blurrier. You can change the transforms, or as you move this around, you're going to see those transforms are going to move as well. But let's go ahead and delete these. I'm going to go ahead and delete these last couple that I've made. And you're also going to see right now we have a background, and we have a color, gradient, sun, and size. So if you go to gradient here, this is going to give us our ground plane. And you can change the gradient colors and the fall off stuff we've already done that's very similar to what the gradient color that we did here. You're also going to see there's a sun and sky in here. So if you choose sun and sky, you're going to see we're now in a sun and sky environment, which is very cool. And even better, in Keyshot 7, you can actually click on the sun and it'll update automatically. So this is much nicer than what you had to do previously, which was set in, kind of dial in what time you wanted, and then go ahead and 
essentially generate a full resolution HDRI before you're able to see the update. Uh, so now we've got our Ryzen sitting here. And again, because we were in the environment settings, we have our lighting environment showing. When you go to the HDRI editor, we can now see that cool sun and sky environment that we're in. So we can kind of do like a high noon, or we can do like an early morning, golden hour, we can do a sunset late at night, golden hour. So you can kind of dial in what looks coolest for you. I think I'm going to set to set to like a maybe a high noon here. And always remember, uh, you're able to modify this thing as well. You're not just set to the sun and sky. You can always go in here. You can add a pin, add a gradient pin. You can even add an image pin. If you click add an image pin, let's go to Keyshot 7 textures, uh, I guess labels, and we'll do this Keyshot icon. So you double click this. You can do, again, control left mouse click to add a highlight. So if you want to, I'm going to put this icon right here. So it reflects in that icon right there. And then you can do left mouse button to position in your environment tab here. And then once you're done, go ahead and hit done. And this one here, we'll go ahead and delete. So we have our highlight one here. And that's going to reflect that image that we placed in our HDRI image. So we can move this up and down, you know, however you want to have that reflect and light your object at the same time. Let's say, you know, you love what you've done here and you don't need to make any more changes. What I'm going to do is click this button here, which is going to generate a high resolution composite. And now when we tumble around, this is no longer low res. It's a very high res reflection uh, that's happening there. Another thing you can do is you can go to this little export button right here. Then you're going to say you can export this as an HDR, an EXR, or an HDZ. Um, if you are using any of these, like these interiors, these Aversus ones, uh, as your starting point, you probably won't be able to export those as HDR images. But if you just created one from scratch, you can absolutely just go ahead and ex export those as HDR images. Another really cool thing is if you don't want to be in this interface here, you can click this little button here, which is the HDRI editor canvas. And now you've got a nice little concise canvas to work within. And it makes that icon a little bit bigger. In fact, I think you could even make this bigger. So you get a better view of what you're doing in here. So when we go here to add a pin, um, the pins are a lot bigger in here. And again, you can control left mouse button to put that highlight right there, click done. And now you can go through here. Uh, in order to change the color, you mean you, you can go through in half and rectangular along here. So you have a lot of functionality in, in here, so we can make this rectangular. But if you do want to change the color, you're, you're going to want to go out of this view here. And then with that selected, go in here to color and then change the color as needed. And remember, outside of the environment HDRI editor, what you can also do is go into your scene. And remember that plane we added, if we turn that back on, and you know what, let's double click that plane and we'll say visible camera temporarily. So this plane that we added to our environment here is an area light that's in lighting environment. So you can use that in conjunction with your lighting environment. So again, if we go here to the environment under settings and change that brightness down to zero, now it's just being lit by that plane. One thing I forgot to mention is under lighting, if you go down here and you have uh, turn on ground illumination and now it'll actually <laughs> illuminate the ground, uh, which kind of gives it a more realistic look. So one thing I forgot to mention, and then you can go back to your environment here to your settings and just crank up the uh, lightness just a bit. Um, if we change that brightness to one, we're getting the full sun and sky that we have. And of course you can over crank that higher than that number if you'd like. And we'll go ahead and double click our screen here, our light plane here, and we'll go uh, turn that, make that not visible to camera anymore. But we still have ground illumination turned on. And while the sun and sky environment is cool, if you don't want to see that, you can go back to your environment settings and change it from the lighting environment back down to color. So now we just have a plain color uh, lighting our environment there.